It's Mutants and Masterminds Monday. Breaking news. Flash. This just in. This Mutants just... and Masterminds proliferating across the country. <laughs> I like that. Now, what do they call that? The Eastern Seaboard accent? Uh -huh. Transatlantic. Yeah. That's it. I knew it was something like that. It is indeed Moomamo and... Um, on Moomamo, we uh, mutants and we mastermind. And mm -hmm. it's Monday as well. And we put it all together in one package just for you, dear listener. Uh, I don't want to correct Troy, but if it's a verb, we mutate and we mastermind. Oh, mm. see, I like that. I appreciate the note. I will accept that. Um, look at the team. Everybody's lining up. RC is saying, happy Moomamo, friend. Doze. Apook says, happy Moomamo, super fan. RC had a really cool 80s adventure on his stream the other day. Oh, was gosh, I really? wanted to see it. You know, I I, I am uh, slowly but surely collecting all of our family and friends across the Internet. Um, well, not across the Internet, across TikTok. Mm -hmm. Because um, we're, we launched, I would say, sort of, we've been there for a hot minute, but we're paying attention to it now. And, <laughs> um, and I'm following um, some of the cast members from uh, Masks and Mayhems. Nice. Masks, masks, and mayhems. I think That's it's not right. I think it's multiple masks, but it's only one mayhem. But a certain flavor of right. uh, mayhem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Claude says five mutants that have masterminded and four that never should. <laughs> Number yeah, three so will surprise you. Was, That's right. was, was RC's adventure called That Cool Lady's Adventure? No, uh, I don't remember what the name of it was. Nate Robin says, the Moomamos. Howdy, AJ Doko Real. Good to see you, friend. Oh, we have a Sean Vieira. Do we have a Sean Vieira? There's a Sean Vieira. A good Eminem to you, my friend. Our friend Glyph says, I seem to recall there are some good tips for media personalities in the Danger Zones book. There are. Wow. Excellent, excellent product placement, Glyph. <laughs> Matthew, uh, I'm not going to lie. For a moment, I thought I was in trouble. <laughs> I, was, I, I read it and immediately in my mind, um, uh, Matthew wrote, uh, how big all caps letters, ellipses, dy. And I was, in my mind, I heard, how very dare you. Oh. RC, there is in fact a highway in the danger zone. I don't know if it leads to the danger zone, but. Okay, I think this in the freedom verse, way. everywhere leads to a danger zone. I don't think yeah, there are a lot of safe much. places. Uh-huh, you pretty know, much. and you know what else leads? into the danger zone why none other than you two fine friends howdy howdy I think you know how um, d how d <laughs> um you know alex steve we get together every monday at 2 p.m pacific we turn on this rancid future pop Mm -hmm. And then we redeem the whole experience um, by hanging out with the cool people in chat. And uh, I really like today's plan. Now, we have to thank and um, oh, I just realized I didn't put it in our um, in our uh, show art. And I'll I'll remedy that. But um, uh, we uh, took suggestions from folks uh, when we did our big planning episode. And this one mm -hmm. in particular was, I'm talking very slow Holy because I don't want, no. it was Sh uh, Sean Holland. Awesome. Who came up with this idea? Sean approved. Yeah. Sean, are you out there? Mm -hmm. I hope I think so. he is. I think he's, I think I saw him laying claim to the idea in chat a little bit ago. Right. Oh, good, good, good. good. Well, everybody, um, uh, Sean gets a hero point for the day. Um, mm -hmm. But the thing about it is you can use that hero point in real life. Mm -hmm. You just, you know, pull it well, out no. and yeah. Yeah. You can rewrite something that sort of didn't go your way. Mm -hmm. um, it looks a little something like this. Yeah. You can quickly recover from anything. Right. Turn, turn a failure to a success. Present the perfect counter argument. Edit a real life situation. Amplify a talent. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. So there you go. I, I like to use them to win arguments. Oh yeah, you know, really, really give, good. Give people it and say, "Sorry, I win. I have the hero point." So I like to use them to power stunt my deadline mode. Mm. Ooh, yeah, that sounded mm. very something. Yes. Yeah, well, okay. When you it's when you've been procrastinating for so long, and then your brain is like, "Okay, activate oh. deadline mode," and then it all gets done. Yeah. 
and then you feel shame for procrastinating for so long and the cycle repeats itself. Yeah, it does kind of work like that, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, you know, so RC brings it up. I wasn't going to mention it, but, um, you know, I, I put podcasts in your press pundits and podcasts because there's a mm-hmm. whole new media component that, uh, that I don't know that I have personally seen. I, I'm, I will be honest at some point I got a little angry at comic books just because I wanted to read one story and not have to travel the multiverse. Um, mm-hmm. you know, it's stopping by each Marvel character's title to learn a snippet of the story. Um, and so I, um, stopped collecting comics, but are, are there, are there sort of, um, any representation in our modern of the, of the citizen journalist, of the influencer, the TikToker, the, you know, the, proletariat press mm-hmm. yeah yeah i mean is there uh, if folks i mean i don't know chad if you are um uh on it but i i mm-hmm. it feels like a it is an industry it is uh, uh, these people are making a living and they are in mm-hmm. media um you know yep. i could see them causing some real trouble for or or even you know being a, a uh, a plucky sort of independent researcher who's you know on the hunt for the well, truth i mean just imagine like true crime podcasts in you know a world with superheroes yeah yeah you know? i know <laughs> what's that like just Bat- batman hasn't solved this one yet <laughs> right. but we're gonna <laughs> that's right right uh you know and i also could see there being because people are so creative at um, at using the internet for both good and ill, I could see there being some real movement making or you know stuff that when it comes time to interact, if someone, if a particular group doesn't agree with a hero, they can really get into it. Uh, only yeah. murders in the freedom only first. Murders, only murders in Freedom City. Yeah, I would subscribe That's right. to that. Uh, Sean I'm pretty Beers. sure Clark Kent yeah. has a blog right now in a podcast mm. i think he's doing that instead of working at the daily planet but that uh, may have been that may have been oh i like this slightly uh, less new news glyph says uh, there are a few canon social influencer villains mm-hmm. like faster pussycat third report okay nice oh. luna moth mm-hmm. and, uh, selfie. and selfie. selfie yeah yeah yep. absolutely Let's see. Uh, Pope Brandon Brownson says an influencer talking about all the lives lost in the first Avengers movie while doing a mukbang. Yeah, you know, honestly, yeah. I mean, like that, those are the kinds of things that yeah. that can really create some texture. And so that's where we're talking. We, you know, we we were just going to talk about it, but we are actually going to create some characters, right? We sure. Are. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. So, um, uh. What um, what are you what are you two going to focus on? What do you think your character? Where are you? How are you going to build it? Well, my intention is to follow that time honored tradition of press as antagonist for the superheroes, mm-hmm. constantly call out how much they fail despite all the good that they do. Mm-hmm. Sort of the menace or hero conversation. Although, honestly, my talking head probably is menace or more menace is the conversation that they want to have about the Freedom League. <laughs> menace or more menace. Menace or even more menace. <laughs> right. To turn that dial up or more. Menace or the worst menace. Menace <laughs> or threat. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. How about you, Steve? Oh, gosh. I'm interested. I'm intrigued by the uh, the, the notion of the um, sort of citizen journalist slash investigative podcaster types yeah i mean once once they've got their hands on social media following you you can have all kinds of interesting uh things to create either create trouble for the heroes or to honestly feed them interesting clues or just you know like oh like that mystery podcaster has gotten kidnapped for like the third time right right yeah yeah so I, I'm thinking of I'm thinking of the character as being sort of an allegory to the any anybody in the world can podcast right now, just anybody. Um, mm-hmm. and, and I want to pick on podcasters specifically because I love me some podcasts. But um, I was thinking of um, anyway, I'm just going to mention it now. There are some you know troubling sort of fantasy beliefs in our world. Uh, people who kind of adhere to a particular mm-hmm. weird letter and kind of wait for it to emit, I don't know, diodes or something to give them the message that they need to, you know, 
whatever they're doing. Um, uh, but but I'm hesitant, and I feel like that's part of the conversation, right? To say, you know, sure. do we do we want to fold that kind of stuff in, or I guess what I'm asking myself is, is it necessary to incorporate uh, this bit of sort of odious stuff? Is it important to the story and commentary in general, or, you know, would people rather sort of just sort of leave that? Well, I mean, I think that um, the media, if not social media, has always been a thing in the comics where it's always been an issue about uh, the the notion of, I mean, certainly villains spreading hate on the media yeah. has been a thing as long as there have been comics. That's I right. Mean, as long as there have been media, voices, yeah. been radio or television <laughs> or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, so I'm sure that the internet and social media would be no different in that regard in a superhero universe. Um, you know, the, the notion of a villain like uh, Nightfire, you know, um, possessing, you know, like a social media network would be a, a pretty freaky Ooh, yeah. adventure. Oh, yeah. You know? so bad. I mean, and, as far so as that goes. Um, and, you know, conspiracy theories in a superhero universe are got to be like crazy because so many yes. of them are true. Right. Right. You know? or, or, or the real yeah. truth is so wild. Right. That or, it, the, it, right or the real truth is yeah. really, really crazy because yeah. like Atlantis exists. So oh, right. and aliens exist. I mean, several um, factions. Uh, right. Yeah. You know, right, and multiple flavors of both, and and so, yeah, <clears throat> and gods and other things like, that I'm picturing a conspiracy theory network that's like trying to force all these weird things into like logical explanations, like the opposite of our conspiracy theories. Right. I I I would think that you know you would get uh, a variation of the birds aren't real I would, conspiracy. You're reading by mind. You know, yeah. that's basically like all of this superhero stuff. It's all fake. Like, yeah, and that's what I was thinking. Like that, it could be like just so, uh, but but really uh, a convincing argument that mm -hmm. you know, um, without any explanation as to sort of what, why. Both would the we... moon landing and the people <laughs> on the moon right. were faked. Mm -hmm. It's a flat <laughs> Earth but a round moon. Data yeah. isn't an immortal. That's just Photoshop. Right. 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 Um, or where's Dataless's birth certificate? <laughs> Oh, Where, the Daedalus yeah. birthers. That is funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, you know, and, and to really take the time to think about um, uh, how those folks can get in and, and really cause some grief for, you know, mm -hmm. you just, you, it's important too, I would imagine, for people to, because these folks don't care about secret identities. They think everybody's got one and they got to find Certainly it. Certainly not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah, one yeah, okay. one podcast that's just dedicated to uprooting superhero secret identities would be an interesting threat. You know, mm -hmm. and be kind of nasty, right? Kind of just right. sort of just, you know, thinking that they're doing uh, almost with a, a, you know, I hate to do, I mean, I, you know, I'm with you, Alex. The, we, we are taking the, these are folks that are here to foment problem uh, mm -hmm. uh, for, for our heroes. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm thinking like almost um, not along the same lines not the same topic not the same vitriol but the uh, um anti-gay churches you know they're just so mm -hmm. venomous and so upset that you know i could really see that being kind of a movement of sorts so yeah well i don't know why i'm going so dark on all this stuff but anyway yeah <laughs> I think Troy has a negative relationship with the media. Let's you know, I <laughs> I really don't. I mean, given you, we're we're uh, media uh, moguls ourselves. Um, you know, starring in our uh, nearly three year long uh, program. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have been absolutely as I've been searching my soul for why I'm going to the dark side on all this stuff, um, ignoring chat. So I apologize, friends. So I'm gonna. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> I will say that I do believe that we have the funniest chat in the biz. Well, because you know, our our chat is so smart. They, I mean, honestly, they are pretty smart. Uh, the whistleblower, I kind of like that idea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. I love all this stuff. And the other thing as well is that, folks, as you're watching this on demand, you really got to watch the chat because it's a whole mm -hmm. nother dimension going on just sort of right under it. I would almost say that that's the actual show and we're just sort of here to kind of confuse you. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, one thing, you know, speaking of uh, smart people on the Internet um, that you, you is often overlooked, but I would think would be a fun 
uh, thing to plague a group of heroes with is the dreaded parody internet account um, oh. that has just decided not to like ruin them, but just decide to really make fun of them all the time. Mm -hmm. uh, and just everything they do is fodder for this anonymous troll who wants to make fun of them. Um, it would be an interesting test of the hero's dedication to their values. Yeah, it would be. I mean, yeah, absolutely. I mean, listen, you know, we, I'm, I am no hero, but there are definitely moments in where I've like, if I had an opportunity to shock a person on the other side, right, I, I would be hitting that button like probably more than once. Can you imagine like a um, like the armchair superhero community? Oh my god! They, like they review footage of what happened in fights, and they're like, if <gasps> right? I had superpowers, I would. Oh, you this. know, I would have totally you... like reverse the polarity of that right right here you know thinking that they know full well like what the you know the the sort of uh, complement of powers are and uh, well mm -hmm. if you you know yeah. if only they would have or whatever I, I mean, that is Cap brilliant. captain thunder could have ended this fight like in 30 seconds if he had just done this but no mm -hmm. he's just gonna punch through everything and that you know. is amazing that's alex that's a really interesting sort of uh uh thing to layer on just sort of a like a mm -hmm. bunch of gladys kravitz's mm -hmm. sort of you know why is the freaking league hiring music? all these women all of a sudden grumble 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 Oof. grumble grumble yeah uh yeah let's see here real quick um a podcast devoted to revealing the secret id of superheroes could be interesting think mm -hmm. about it a discord channel yeah yes yeah yes uh, uh, yeah in fact uh, our friend friend of the show uh nathan smith mentioned he has a uh, a group called the Hero Chasers. Uh, oh, they would these, exist. You know, which are like, I mean, you imagine storm chasers in the real world, you know, people who are just got to be like on the forefront of every superhero, supervillain fight ever so that they can make sure to capture it and be there and see it. And of course, be there to be endangered by all the falling debris. <laughs> yeah, you know, the, the, absolutely. Bumping into hero aftermath mm -hmm. or even just as it's as you know before math is uh or during math right. is um wow i mean that that is worse than any sort of cat five tornado i mean yeah yeah interesting these are all really fascinating sort of takes on you know kind of a little bit of modern times but because we don't have these you know the only heroes that we have are ourselves um, mm -hmm. you know, it is, I could almost see too more of the knockoff hero, like mm -hmm. people who are just really trying hard. I was looking sure. at the chat. Someone's like, you know, it's the, it's the actual spider guy. <laughs> right. Well, that's, it's sort of veering a little off our topic. It, it that's certainly like, is. Like classic, uh, story from the tick, you know, of course, where he runs into another superhero who is called the tick. Mm -hmm. uh, and he's like, oh yeah. My, and he's like, that's Wait, what are you name. doing? Yeah. <laughs> I love that. Uh, David Bullock says, uh, conversely, uh, conversely, hero chasers that do what they can to scrub evidence. Mm. Now, do you say, are they, are they, are they sort of like the minions of the hero they, the hero never wanted, or are they trying to cause, you know, trouble? Uh, the minions the hero never wanted is such a fun trope. <laughs> Isn't right? it though? Because you, they can't really be mad. They can be mad. They're trying to be patient, but they're, you know, because honestly, there's no worse right. scorn once, than once again, the going with internet. That theme, yeah. Thank you for doing that thing that no one asked you to do. That's right. Mm -hmm. And, and there is like a devoted fan mm -hmm. in that way can turn into some very different energy, you know, um, Okay. Well, okay. So, uh, how shall we proceed? We've got a lot of really great ideas, you know, some kind of on the bubble of the topic, but, you know, related in, in how can, in that sort of, how can we make things very difficult for heroes that are playing in, you know, like for instance, Alex, uh, you know, I'm imagining one of these, uh, reporters has some manner of, um, torture device or, uh, a way to find their family and, uh, send them to the negative zone or realm or whatever. I mean, you, you tend to torture your heroes pretty mercilessly. I mean, I, I don't have the media send their family to the negative zone, but yeah. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Sorry, friends. <laughs> J. Jonah Jameson got his hands on a Phantom Zone projector. We're all in trouble. We're all in trouble. <laughs> That's true. That you do you do save um, those sorts of tortures for you know maybe more powerful beings. Um, but uh, I have but to yeah. right now. My players are PL thirteen with. 280 power points. <laughs> wow. Yeah, yeah, there aren't a lot more powerful beings around. That's right. Yeah. Oh, I like that. Uh, let's see here real quick. Um, oh, geez. I, I, I will say this, but only because I, I like its um, wink uh, at uh, other issues of the day. But the only way to stop a bad guy with superpowers is a good guy with superpowers. Mm-hmm. You know that that's something that's going on. And because uh, yeah. I, I yeah. honestly did think about sort of creating a Fox News type pundit mm-hmm. who's just very fury, but also is just sure. really cashing in on. Sure. And yeah, they don't even, really care. It, it's even worse. Sometimes you think about it. There's there's the media pundit, you know, who is very critical of the heroes and causing them trouble. Yeah. But then there's the media pundit who support the heroes don't want yes. it anyway. That's right. Like, this, this person is the worst, but of course they think the heroes are great. Uh, and it's like, no, like, don't be a fan of us. <laughs> like, don't be telling people that. Oh no. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Sean, you, know? you bring up a good one too. You know, the, the, you know, this sort of moment where people, we just haven't realistically, I think, in some cases, contended with what a hero would go through and to see how the media would turn on a hero if they didn't use their power in the way that, you know, you got the whole world judging you. Um, I do think that the, um, what is it? Is it the boys? Mm-hmm. That's the name of it, right? Mm-hmm. They they do some of that uh, yeah. really well. Uh, they play around with the idea of the media a lot. Oh, mm-hmm. absolutely. And just these really fallible heroes or well, you know, uh, yeah. Yeah. heroes is a strong word. <laughs> right. People with superpowers. These really fallible celebrities. Yeah. 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 Um, let's see. Da, 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 da. Yeah. Oh, good. Uh, Dominic says uh, my character has a news pundit like that. Right. Um, SC Terran Marine says, of course, if the government makes it a federal offense to try and uncover a hero's secret ID, you can be sure that some people will argue that the law, mm-hmm. yeah, freedom of speech, sure. and what are they hiding? Right. Yeah, that relies exactly. on the government being a fan of superheroes in your setting, it which does, isn't always which the case. Which may or may not be the case. And they could on. be a big fan and just not be real effective of getting yeah. that thing done. So <laughs> Nate Robbins raises the interesting notion of telepaths who are providing real scoops, you know, <gasps> to the, the news and things like that. Yeah. The even scarier thing about that is how do you know, like, why can't they just say, a telepath told us this? Are you going to prove they didn't? <laughs> yeah. You know, can you prove you can't read someone's mind? Right. That's very interesting. Um, uh, that is very interesting it, to also think about, like, you, you know, you could be uh, thinking about media and and sort of the the how we blended a lot of the people who are on television and they're mm-hmm. famous for maybe not reasons that are immediately clear uh, by any of the shows that they're in. But I'm thinking of, like, uh, or also then there's the... the um, uh, the madam, not the madam. <laughs> she's not the madam. She's <laughs> she's a medium. <laughs> mm-hmm. mm. Yes, not a madam. Yes. Well, uh, you again, know, you know, whatever. when you get into like shows, like you know, about mediumship and yeah. psychics talking with the oh. beyond. Well, there are people who can really do that. <laughs> Star Island medium needs to be a freedom. Version. Star Island medium. I talk just a lore house. lady. Who I, I talk with like... the ghosts of aliens. Yes. How <laughs> funny. Oh, but yeah. Only, but only aliens. Yes. <laughs> I like that. She claims a lot. to be a lore, but she's really from Mississippi. Right. <laughs> that is great. Um, who determines who is a superhero and who is not? You know, I do think, Warden Maximus, at some point, you got to be a little super. Mm-hmm. You know, um, if the gravy isn't there, is a gravy squatch. It's just a wet you know, sort of a uh, mammal that <laughs> walks up, right? Let's see. Dominic says, Mitch Masters, host of the Masters Report. He's like the Stephen Colbert of late night talk. Yeah, I like mm-hmm. that. That's really that's really clever. I think that there, uh, in, and because Mutants and Masterminds and comics in general depends on borrowing those tropes, there's a rich library of just sort of what's going on now. Um, okay, we'll see last week tonight set in the superhero universe. Right. Yes. Just John yes. Oliver going to town on absolutely. Superheroes. Yeah. Yeah. I um, 
Yeah, I'm thinking too and, of uh, go, go ahead, Steve. Well, and similarly, you're going to get for a lot of those, especially comedians, you're going to get cases where they go after the villains. And boy, is that going to get awkward really fast Right, Um, because, you know, like a lot of them do not like being mocked. Right. Yeah. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Um, You know, and it's interesting, too, because, you know, heroes that sort of embrace their hero ness and they step into their role as heroes, heroes that hide that are being something else. Mm-hmm. to cover for themselves and then utilizing either knowingly or unknowingly, they don't get access to adequate training and sort of personal discipline and that kind of stuff could really blow up. Yeah. Well, it's only, it, you can get, you know, we talk about a lot of the supporting cast that you will get, you know, helping out heroes like their, you know, their team mechanic or patron or things like that. You know, in this day and age, a team of heroes is chances are they're going to have some kind of a press person or media advisor oh, or yes. someone to help manage their image. Yeah, uh, as far as that goes, and that's that's a rough job. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh. I played a game once where that character was my character's sister, mm. and he had a secret identity from her, so he had to be in the mask all oh, the wow. time. Okay, well, so um, I'm reading. Boy, we have got some great stuff in here. <laughs> I saw what you said, Warden Maximus. Uh, I just can't repeat it. Just not because it's bad. It just makes me sad. Uh-oh. The notion that there'd be a gravyless squatch. Mm-hmm. <laughs> he says, uh, "Just some hairy guy covered in gravy, not a sasquatch." Um, let's see. That's, uh, the, yes. that's the real reveal. I've been the gravy squatch this whole time. <laughs> whole, whole time. <laughs> wow. Your secret identity was hating gravy. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. Of course. Never, I hate no one ever, I can't no one ever suspect him. Exactly. Yeah. Brilliant. <laughs> Absolutely. Brilliant. Um, let's Clark see. Kent being the reporter that tears down Superman all the time would be the best thing ever. Mm-hmm. Like, it's not that great. Oh, interesting. Yeah. Have, has something like that been done? I mean, it's always sort of been aggrandizing, you know, Peter Parker style or. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, they played around a little, little bit with Batman from time to time. Every once in a while, mm-hmm. Bruce Wayne is always just like, I don't understand what you know the big deal about Batman is. Right. Yeah. Right. Uh, let's and see. I, po- I do love the DC notion um, that they, they once had a story where um, Batman explains how he is the one going around the Internet seeding all of the Bruce Wayne is secretly Batman <laughs> stories mm-hmm. because oh, right. because it's become such a conspiracy theory that no one believes it. Like everybody's like, that's ridiculous. They'd be like Kim Kardashian being Batman. That's right. nonsense. Claude, Claude brings up a good point. Just like how uh, J. Jonah Jameson claims to hate Spider-Man, but he eats thousands of spiders a year. Right. As we all do, I guess. That's what I've heard anyway. Um, I was <laughs> Putingo. Poutine go. Oh, poutine to go. <laughs> the poutine to go. What is that? Is that is that a it's, thing? It's it's a gravy based Wendigo, I assume. I thought it was a gravy based dingo, but I was no, reading those it are wrong. From Australia. That's right. That's right. <laughs> um, poutine to go oh, is from Canada, and so North Amer- northern North America. I, well, and, and so it's not like a like a sort of a, a side of the road uh, poutine stand where you say. Uh, one order of poutine to go, please, and they give it to you. And I mean, that would be an unfortunate name confusion. If it turned it out would be, yeah, it would be. Um, let's see. I want to check this out. Uh, if the government supports heroes and tries to protect them, some people would try to argue against that. Of course, I know in City of mm-hmm. Heroes there was uh, City of Heroes. I worked on that little project. There was an insurance program where the government helps companies that are duped into helping villains plot. Yes, right. So if the mm-hmm. government helps heroes and protects their identities, you can be sure they're going to be people who are, you know, and, and that's the thing. I mean, one, one thing that we have proven as a human race is if there's ever a good thing, there are about 20 people who don't like it. Right. Yeah. That's inexplicably. True. Yeah. That's true. Oh, Dominic raises a good one. The, the conspiracy theorist who manages to accidentally guess a villain's master plan um, and now the villain has to eliminate them <laughs> because you know before, before anybody else figures it out mm-hmm. i love it um the ma- if you're right ages is coming to get you immediately mm-hmm. like they're gonna throw you in the minority report chair 
right? No questions asked. <laughs> right. <laughs> no questions to ask. Have a seat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, let's see. Dominic says, oh, here's a good one. A wacky conspiracy theorist media personality inadvertently could guess a villain's latest scheme. Right. Yeah. I like that a lot. Um, yep. it, maybe even if they just sort of they know it's not necessarily true, but they want to get the clicks. And then they're like, right. Oh, wait a minute. This, some of this is coming true. Right. And that's, and Sean says the exact thing, you know, so when the, the person goes to the hero team and is like, you know, this villain is after me. And they're like, really? <laughs> like, right. Why? What did you do? <laughs> you know, the light work said edible Ethan. That sounds like a horrible superhero. I'm just going to mm. admit it. <laughs> <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I just people just take a bite. I'm t- <laughs> like every other human on Earth, I am edible. Right? <laughs> you know, I didn't think about that. Yeah, I don't think I'd be yeah. able to eat a full human. Not, Not in one, one sitting. sitting. <laughs> 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 two kinds of people in the world, <laughs> and two of them uh, are on this show. <laughs> Oh, that's so good. Uh, RC says, oh, I like the idea of a media personalities uh, being very critical of the Aegis type orgs. Mm-hmm. These villains aren't even getting a trial or any due pro. Oh, yes, yeah, absolutely. I, just, I can't imagine a world where leftist media is on the is on the superhero side. Right. I mean, because they are kind of against the whole notion of due process for the most part. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Like, you know, um, I'd be so sad because like. Fox News would be all about superheroes and everybody else would be mm-hmm. like, I think these people need regulations and enforcements and mm-hmm. things that make sense but don't play into the power fantasy. Right. Yeah, right, right, right. right. Also, hey, Pope, I just want to say uh, your application for that joke has been denied. <laughs> Dang. <laughs> I, I love Jonesy's idea of uh, a group made up of all of the media and reporter spouses and significant others who are involved with heroes yeah i think that's awesome who have gotten together to kind of help them out i think that's awesome you know i was thinking about you know in in the mutants and masterminds world a lot of podcasts uh a lot of uh i'm not mutants masterminds in the real world a lot of podcasts Mm -hmm. you know they depend on brands and all kinds of stuff um sponsors yeah, sponsors and stuff. And, you know, um, I think that there's one it's uh, for, I hear it a lot. It's like uh, me panties or something, uh, me fun buns or something. What is it? It's a brand okay. of, of underpants. Okay. And, wow. um, and my f- whole thing is um, we, you know, I think we want to invest as much energy into sort of bringing moments of of sort of texture and and bringing mutants masterminds to life is what i'm is what i'm thinking mm-hmm. and that's why um when i it is me undies that's me undies. it not me panties sorry <laughs> uh <laughs> mean to their own for no <laughs> yeah honestly yeah and i and i feel i feel like this is a safe space but i you know um i just i thought even what a weird name for a brand but me mm. isn't you know i mean i don't know uh maybe they're australian Mm-hmm. I'm like, mm-hmm. oh, me undies, or I don't know why I'm talking like that. Uh, but you know, here's why I bring it up mm-hmm. because <laughs> Look, oh, they're for is... sale. <laughs> they're for sale for thirty dollars. You can be the proud owner of our very first pair of boxer briefs. I hate to wow. break it to you, Troy, but I'm already the proud owner of our very first pair. <laughs> <laughs> so you have you have inside access. Yes, Ev yeah. sent me some. I, I they're they're in the mail right now. <laughs> this is so great. I'm sure, chat is going to either demand a fashion show or demand that there not be a fashion show. I think that we, you know, let's not. But that logo is from Sentinels of Earth Prime. RC. Yes, indeed. Which, by the way, is releasing soon, I believe. Mm-hmm. Ele- electronically. For electronically. I mean, it's already out in print, but uh, the the ele- online version of it, uh, electronic version of it is releasing soon. Yeah. So um, 30 bucks. They are uh, high quality. They come with a uh, Daedalus in the front. Mm-hmm. Logo mm-hmm. in the back. 
And uh, <laughs> I love this uh, back in parentheses and front by mm -hmm. popular demand, nefarious threat. <laughs> mm -hmm. I've been doing squats all week in case I need to right. show these as a picture. <laughs> <laughs> Probably is worn under a certain golden hued battle suit in and around Freedom City. Do you think Daedalus wears his own underwear? Hmm. Well, I don't know. You know, I mean, he's kind of, you know, from kind of a big deal for the invention of underwear. But yeah, I mean, but if, you know, if someone were if someone gave you a pair of underwear right. with your face on it, would you wear it? I'm no, yeah. <laughs> just just for the record. And because the holidays yeah. are coming up. No. <laughs> <laughs> Be clear. You know what to do, chat. Yeah. <laughs> which face steve which face would you want on your own underwear? <laughs> you don't want any faces on my we underwear got, of any we got, i mean you know it's not like we have three years worth of of footage to mine no i mean that's that we true. wouldn't i mean I, i'm faces? not yeah. i'm not suggesting the chat go mining the you know mumamo for steve faces to no, put on that would be wrong Troy. <laughs> it would be wrong would be very wrong nate and i we... will totally calvin klein these skivvies <laughs> We'll do that at Gen Con. Um, but yeah, so 95% polyester, 5% uh, elastine, and 100% Daedalus. <laughs> um, it's, it's got a crotch panel. It sure does. Uh, it's, uh, I, you know, so this is, of course, thanks to uh, Ev, who um, picked up on our little... Mm -hmm. You know, giving Alex the biz, uh, uh, trying to make people believe that you were wearing your mutants masterminds gear, but under your clothing, mm -hmm. and um, and look what happened. Do you see? We, you mm -hmm. just have to manifest it, and it will come. And I also told Ev that black Hades boxers do. would be great too. Say that mm -hmm. again. I also told Ev that black Hades boxers would be great too. Oh yeah, I mean, so it's a thing, and uh, it, we, proving we that nothing becomes between Alex and Hades. Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. And next, we're going to have Arctic Fox with some kind of mm -hmm. you Arctic know. Fox at stockings. <laughs> I like it. Garters. Oh, I prefer Arctic Fox garters. I got that. Okay. Well, so we are learning things about each other today. And, um, <laughs> and we but, just can't unlearn. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, I mean, you know, and who would want to um, when you got something like this? And so all I got to say, friends, is um, you help make this happen. So. Look what you made us do. Mm -hmm. um, really, uh, I, I honestly, I laughed so hard at this that I, I think I might have burst some kind of a, a vessel uh, in my, uh, you know, sort of milky fog. And um, I, I, I just, I can't stop thinking of the various things that we could make and uh, put on underwear mm -hmm. for the world. So, you know, if you got an idea, um, uh, share it on the internet. Don't send the email. But share it with us uh, on Twitter, or um, or you know where else you can share it. TikTok, because we're there. Troy's yeah, new love TikTok. What was that? Troy's new love TikTok. My yeah, my new obsession. I'm I'm yeah. really trying to get to a point where I'm doing it in a way that is not um, uh, incredibly time sensitive, or uh, time. Uh, you know, I'm not. Thank you. That also time sensitive as well. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, but uh, nice. Pope says, uh, yeah, I already tweeted those undies out. Uh, TikTok handle is Green Ronin Publishing. And uh, let me. I had all this stuff ready to go. And the Daedalus uh, Mutant Semester Panties just threw me right off my just feed. Knocked um, everything right off. Just <laughs> right out. Um, I will get uh, uh, details out there. Just a little, uh, just a little break to take a look at those uh, phenomenal um, undergarments. Um, but so we are. Um, I'm following you, Drama Dork. Drama Dork says, "Wait, what is your TikTok? It it'll sound very familiar." Green Ronin Publishing. <laughs> um, but yeah, you, you're talking about your uh, the 80s um, gig that you're doing. You are, I was saying earlier that um, we were following all of the nerds, mm -hmm. you know, from all various. Wow. Uh, you know, there's so many um, on TikTok. I mean, you know, we're nerds as well. But it's super, super fun. And um, yeah, you definitely want to... Uh, 
this is going to start playing. So if you hear it, my apologies. But uh, are we just Green Ronin? Nope. We are Green Ronin Publishing. Mm -hmm. That we are. Mm -hmm. do, 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 do. Or am I Green Ronin Pub? I might be Green Ronin Pub. Oh, we are Green Ronin Pub some places. You know, I, I, am, we, I did it. We are Green Ronin Pub. I'm a liar and um, I am unapologetic. <laughs> but. Uh, yeah, you know, uh, Alex, uh, I was talking to you before the show, and uh, we featured you in kind of one of our first little developer um, things. Um, you know, what this thing actually is, I don't, I couldn't tell you what, I mean, it's it's sort of a, a, a teaser, we'll say, for stuff going on in the world. I'll share it. Why don't I? Why wouldn't I? Why shouldn't mm -hmm. I? As if we could stop you. Right. Yeah, exactly. Um <laughs> There we go. And do, 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 do. stop. I want it. I got it. 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 That, of course. How fun is that? <laughs> So yeah, that's uh, what I'm doing with my time. I like how it demonstrates how Alex game masters with his hands. Game masters with his hands. <laughs> that's right. Yeah, he was he was game mastering hard over there. Um, that was such a cool that, group of, of folks. It is where too. it lives. The game lives right here. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's right. That was um, my mummy game at Gen Con last year. Yes, that's right. Uh, cool group uh, yeah. of folks. I, they were really I think great. You deafened our entire chat, Troy. <laughs> Oh, sorry. I didn't do that on purpose. <laughs> I don't. I don't mean to do it. I, it's a little. It's a sort of. Think of it like an Easter egg. <laughs> that if you're listening to something that I'm doing and it's irritating you in some way, that's not accidental. Um, <laughs> no, not at all. <laughs> Sean Holland, loud. Um, have you been repurposing your YouTube shorts over TikTok? Uh, I have. I have. Um, I've set them up, but the, one of the challenges is that um, I have a, I have a little pet peeve when you see the overlay of all the other social medias that they've used mm -hmm. that video for, and then it, it, it just makes it messy and yucky looking. Um, green mm -hmm. running themed ear protection. We will charge you. Yeah, absolutely. Exactly. <laughs> I really love green running themed headphones to the range. That'd be dope. You know, so I'm I, I Alejandro. I want to thank you. Uh, by the way, I'm uh, asking what the topic is for today, and we are what we're doing is just discussing press and and the media figures mm -hmm. that you can kind of insert into your uh, mutants and masterminds encounter, and, and uh, it kind of create sort of rolling, growing, fomenting mm -hmm. trouble for you know right. mm -hmm. for your adventure. Um, right. So. Is there anything that folks should be thinking about when they're, it's pretty easy as evidenced by our own discussion. We just kind of mm -hmm. went all over the place, but, but it was good. I mean, it did definitely were threads mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, that have some interesting fruit to sort of uh, uh, right. explore and digest. Um, so I thought of a yeah. whole other subgenre of media that would be super interesting Ooh. in the mutants and masterminds world. And that is fashion and cosplay. <gasps> oh yeah. Especially that because is... so many of the cosplayers would be so much better at making costumes than the heroes. Unless they have a really, you know, like mom who's really handy, you know, as you know, not to yeah. stereotype or anything, but mom made superhero costumes are the best. Imagine well, they how are, bummed yeah. a hero would be if they came to a convention for an appearance and somebody showed up with a better costume than them. Right, and they lost the cosplay contest mm -hmm. of themselves. How funny. Like, yeah, nobody believes that outfit. That is hilarious. I love that, you know, or also, you know, the, the hero that is, they're, they're also, the whole cosplay community then creates the, the people who will draw them and they'll mm -hmm. do commissions and, mm -hmm. you know, it, it sort of dovetails into other sort of fandoms and things. Uh, it would be hilarious. I, I there's, I've seen mm -hmm. it a couple of times in, um, in some, uh, sitcoms where the Hollywood star 
gets tangled up with their fans because they're not good at it. They don't really get it, you know, and uh, mm-hmm. the idea yeah. of a fan coming and looking better than the hero is hilarious. And then the right. hero then they get kidnapped. Get it. Right. <laughs> of course. <laughs> right. Yeah, that could be part of it, too. And uh, the other thing I was thinking, too, is that the hero to try to get cool points with his fan base could go and say, uh, oh, hey, uh, draw me artists and, you know, not not to, to not observe the, mm-hmm. you know, the proper like exchange of whatever and uh and then piss off all of the artists who then do something really nasty and <laughs> end up you know uh, making that hero look even worse that's a lot of fun right. to be and then you can get the you know the very well-meaning cosplayers who are like let's like dress this hero who yes. obviously you know is just hopeless in this regard and then of course you're going to get the very mean fashion critics who are just like you know like let's criticize this character's costume because <laughs> it's mm-hmm. terrible Interesting. Can you sue someone for libel if you have a secret identity? Huh. Mm. Well, it depends on who you're suing, and you can get into the whole question of can costumed superheroes be sued, and you know how they at the end of the day we in court. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. And at the end of the day, you know, um, it's all about how much money you got. Yep. Do you have to have a superhero LLC <laughs> to right. sue people with? You know, a Claude says the heroes would likely hire a great cosplay designer to make mm-hmm. their costumes. Yeah, very mm-hmm. interesting. We were talking sure. about those those PR people, those folks that are kind of, you know, uh, there to clean up a mess or, you know, create a mess that's fake, you know, all that kind of stuff. I could imagine there being sort of an agency devoted to making heroes the best heroes they can be. You know, like mm-hmm. there's a bunch of influencers, sort of agencies and stuff that do right. that thing. Right. And especially if you're in a setting like uh, um, Earth Prime that has unique costume materials, um, I got to imagine that like the holy grail of cosplayers on Earth Prime is to get a hold of some morphic molecule fabric Mm -hmm. uh, in order to make something out of it. But of course, it's like highly restricted, (laughs) like nobody can get any except like on the black market. Yeah, yeah. You know, uh, interesting. Uh, Apu brings up this: no one over fourteen is allowed to be in costume at Disney, except for the cast members, and that's true. Mm-hmm. Yes. The, the, it has yes. actually inspired a cosplay that is a, a sort of color um, uh, stacking, or they like the it's it is a different sorts of dresses and things and and uh, arrangements of clothing that suggest mm-hmm. the color profile. Um, right. Yeah. Uh, let's see. RC said, just when did a test, Troy? You should have a download button on YouTube Studio to get a clean download copy of your shorts. Yes, I, yeah, you're right, RC. I, I do have that. Um, I'm picturing and, a villain like sneaking into the cosplay black market to try to get morphic mm-hmm. molecules for nefarious purposes. Yes. Of course. But then getting run out because they're not good enough cosplayers. Because <laughs> their costume is terrible. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. Disney bounding. That's what it is. Yeah. RC and Drama Dirk. Mm. clearly know their stuff um let's see glyph says i have a social influencer fashion model character with complications that include mm-hmm. motivation recognition fame and online rogues gallery and a responsibility her a brand responsibility to the brand yes. yes yeah 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 yeah. all about the brand yeah absolutely um okay so we are as always a very um fruitful uh, plentiful in idea, mm-hmm. our idea basket overfloweth. Um, yes, what are some of the practical things that we can do to save our future self from, you know, cause if you, there, there are just clearly some things that you should do so that you don't like lose these good ideas, but I couldn't tell you what they are. What, what, uh, what are some things that, uh, that folks should consider, um, when doing this stuff? Well, I think the key thing to consider, and we had a, just a ton of amazing ideas, um, is to consider the kind of game you want mm-hmm. and always work back from that. Um, I think that you can implement a lot of these ideas, but a lot of them aren't suitable for particular kinds of campaigns. Um, it can be fun to you know, give the, char- the, the heroes a, um, a media pundit critic for an adventure or two, yeah. or, you know, just as a reoccurring character. Um, but 
if you know generally your the tone of your your game is supposed to be that heroes are the good guys and people generally like them you're probably not going to lean too heavily into that notion that the media criticizes them all the time um because that just runs counter to the tone of your game yeah. and the players are eventually going to be like this isn't the game we signed up for mm -hmm. um you know if on the other hand your game is all about how people with superpowers are hated and feared and they're doing good things in spite of that, then that's a different tone. And yeah, then of course the media is always gonna be critical of the heroes and they should expect that. So a lot of it is, is keeping in mind what the overall tone and style and themes of your game are before you introduce elements to it that are gonna you know, kind of disrupt that. Yeah, Esquire, I, I'm with you on this too. Yeah, constantly putting down your heroes would uh, put a toll on the GM as well. I mean, yeah, you'd I hope. So too. Yeah, he would hope, yeah. Uh, I think it's also important to remember that the media is a tool for you as a game master to show mm -hmm. the effect your characters are having on the campaign world. Yes. Ooh, um, yeah. Like you can write, you can write newspaper reports, you can write blog posts, you can write things to show your players that give them information about how they're being perceived, and even as seeds for like future campaign elements. Like if mm -hmm. you want to introduce a plot hook through the media, something natural that way. So it feels like it's coming from in universe instead of you hanging a carrot out for them to follow. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Also, a yeah. very interesting thread to tie back to something that happened where someone was then, you know their origin story to be whatever this thorn media thorn in the side of the hero started because mm -hmm. that hero did something that, mm -hmm. you know, hurt them or, you know, mm -hmm. yeah. Created and it's problem. important to remember that the media is not a monolith. I know it's ever present, mm -hmm. but even if, right. even if the majority of media outlets don't like your heroes, there will be some that do and vice versa. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And then that actually is a very interesting sort of push and pull between the motivation for these things oftentimes can be, or the it's also the it's the motivation and also the justification for doing things that are kind of nasty and is that it gets the clicks, you mm -hmm. know. And so that's a that's an interesting kind of place to to kind of play around in. I think um, another yeah. thing to think about is in modern media, it's often better to be fast than it is to be correct to the people in charge of it. Yes. So even if a new story comes out that paints the heroes in a bad light it probably hasn't been fully researched and there is an opportunity to make things better if the heroes act fast enough. Right. I like that. I like that. Um, let's see. Nate Rum said five minutes. Oh, until we're what? Yep. What? How did that even happen? Hey, we need to talk about the, uh, the new roll 20 release. We do. And that's exactly what I'm uh, kind of clicking around in the background. I'm just so, um, I can't believe that. Well, we did come. We we were a little late, so I'm going to add an extra. Um, yeah, just going to add a little extra time to that. Um, but before we do that, um, uh, we, we will. We've got some roll twenty stuff to share. But yeah. I want to kind of know. So we did think a little bit about names and things um, uh, for some of these. Uh, do we want to flesh out some of these because we kind of got into some great discussion and mm. left our heroes sort of or our 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 not heroes our our um, uh, media folk only half I, produced. I don't really know. We have a lot of fleshing out time. Oh, we like won't do that now. I'm just saying, like, um, yeah. Point, I, and I also, Alex, I know that you had uh, thought of a couple names. Um, yeah, so I came up with a Manosphere podcaster who is very anti-superhero and very big on selling you vitamins named P. <laughs> Parker Peterson. <laughs> and the P stands for? Paul. Ah. Mm -hmm. Paul Parker Peterson. Mm -hmm. And he will bring people onto his podcast just to shame them. But yet, people keep coming onto the thing. <laughs> right, exactly. And, and so is he wildly popular and... Uh... Just sort of people blindly follow. He is wildly popular with a very vocal minority mm. who let everybody know that he is just the epitome of manhood, despite being a balding, overweight, middle-aged white guy. Yeah, yeah. With a lot of things to be angry about. Pretty much, right. you know, the balding and the middle aging and all that stuff. Well, he's he's just asking questions, Troy. That's right. Mm -hmm. He's just asking questions. He's just asking questions. It's the a question, joke. The questions that other people aren't willing to ask. Yeah, it's I'm an intellectual. I pursue That's I pursue right. thought theory. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. right. Nobody else has the guts to ask the questions mm -hmm. that I'm asking. Daedalus claims he's a genius, but is he really? 
right? I want to see his IQ test, even though he's older than IQ testing. <laughs> What's a genius anyway? <laughs> right? yeah. Who his decides? Was on Mensa. All right. <laughs> and it is called Mensa for a reason. <laughs> ay, ay, ay. This guy, I do not like him. <laughs> uh, Steve, had you thought of, I, I couldn't remember, we, I know uh, we talked a little bit about, I, I didn't pick any, I, I don't even think I really settled on a, on a medium person, mm -hmm. but uh, do you have uh, um, any sort of uh, flesh out thoughts just as we sort of... Well, my idea was for uh, a character named Maddie McMurphy, who is a investigative podcaster. Um, which is to say that she's like, you know, the a true crime podcast investigator, um, but she's an amateur sleuth who is interested in, in uncovering crimes and exposing, you know, the nefarious plots of villains and the like, which means she is prime kidnap fodder um, for the bad guys, because she's always stumbling upon some hidden plot or scheme or the like, um, and then, you know, uh, getting into trouble. So uh, probably somebody that the heroes will eventually have to geotag uh, with a tracking device. Ooh, just I like to that. Speed things up, which is notably <laughs> kidnapped. Mm -hmm. I like she that. She sounds awesome. Right? But she's plucky. Mm -hmm. Doesn't give up. <laughs> no, see, the, the Mensa comment did it. Um, I, somebody's going to take that clip out of context and ruin my political career. Not hardly. No, no, no. <laughs> um, now they'll, they'll hey, honestly, what they'll do is they'll run with that commitment to doing a uh, underwear fashion show. That's the thing that's going to get mm. you. No, that's fine. Won't hurt your political career, but right. Uh, Look, the thoughts of these NPCs do not reflect the game master. It'll make the a general disclaimer weird. that everybody should. Have that's right. Exactly. On their GM screen. That's absolutely right. Um, so. I have settled on my, mm -hmm. um, I think it's this. I think that mine is a young, um, highly, oh, sorry, there's a big bug. It's a bee. <laughs> it just flew into my, <laughs> I can't believe it. Eee! Sorry. <laughs> it's big. Um, uh, so uh, mine, uh, I, I, it is a high school a young high school girl uh, who has m a million followers on mm. uh, on Blick Block and um, Blick Block and, and Blick Block and uh, it, you know what I think what's interesting about that is that um, I think that she's I think she's Steve you kind of inspired me that whole like criticizing um, the looks of mm -hmm. of superheroes and I think that that's her that's her shtick that's what right. she sort of picked out is and 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 it really hurts. You know, right? like she, she gets under their skin. Um, I like that. Uh, you know, it also is um, a good reason for me to, it's kind of a segue, honestly, to something. Mm -hmm. It is. Wanna, uh, I'm just picturing the drag show, but it's dragging superheroes costumes. <gasps> yeah. Right? Oh, my God. That is so funny. That Okay. Yeah. Okay. We'll work on something like that. Um yeah. Uh, all right. Look at this. The high school heroes bundle is live at Roll Twenty. It is a, a combination of content. Um, we've got the uh, Hero High token pack, Hero High archetypes, and uh, Bike Club. Nice. And oh. as I understand it, Troy, this is the first time the Hero High archetypes have appeared on Roll Twenty. That's absolutely right, and it's uh, it's you get a little bit of a discount if you order this bundle, and it's good stuff. Um, kudos to the team and Jonesy for putting that stuff together. Fourteen ninety five. That's a that's a sweet deal. That's it's a, a really super sweet deal. deal. It's a super duper sweet deal, and um, yeah, and Hero Hero High Archetypes making its debut. Mm -hmm. Nice. Look at that. The collection features Alien Exile, Alien Hybrid, Child of Darkness, Construct, Envoy, uh, Disembodied Troy, Future Period. <laughs> I mean, just all, a lot of stuff in here. Um, a lot of good stuff. Gosh, we, you know, you might just want to, friends, just pick this bundle up, of course. You want to get that quickly mm -hmm. uh, because it's not going to be on sale forever. But um, you're going to want to check out the just the whole marketplace. 
there's we've got so much stuff going on there. I guarantee you've missed some things. Mm -hmm. Um, and uh, yeah, good stuff. Yeah, let's see. Got uh, 13 ready to use characters. This is the archetypes. I wanted to read. There we go. Um, collection of 13 PL8 heroes in the archetypes, 33 tokens. I love uh, Hero Hero High is one of my favorites, and I think it's just because yeah. it's just sort of you know it's like I think of the New Mutants and the whole thing, but I mean it just I mean just Hero High, it's fun. A Bite Club, which is great. Um, yeah, yeah. Uh, based in mutant or based at uh, in uh, Hero Fairmont High, Academy. Yeah, yeah, Fairmont Academy. And there there is some um, vampire shenanigans. Indeed, or yeah. are there? Or are there? Hmm. <laughs> You'll have to play to find out. But um, but yeah, go check that out. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm getting choked up because I just love heroes so much. Let's see. Um, I remember playing one of the Hero High, Hero High archetypes in a Patreon game here a while ago. Mm -hmm. Good memories. It's Dominique says that. Foodie Kryptonides Food Truck Follies. <laughs> mm -hmm. Nate Robbins. I'm not sure where you're going, friend, but I like the smell of it. Or see, uh, I think that Fearmont Academy must be the you know version on the parallel version of Earth Prime, where everything is like a supernatural monster. <laughs> that's right. That's right. I do not want to go to that right that freedom verse. Alejandro brings up an interesting, uh, you know. And by the way, Alejandro, I'm not sure if this is the first time the, you've uh, stopped by, but I, I want to say I've really enjoyed your comments. You've uh, really provided some very thoughtful, uh, very uh, meaningful uh, uh, engagement. So thank you for that. And uh, one of those very thoughtful, meaningful engagements says an interesting, an interesting topic for another podcast could be how how can businessmen use externalities to profit from supervillains indirectly enough that it is difficult to get them to stop abs mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. absolutely um and uh as opposed to a super villain who is a businessman right yeah yeah um but I, you know i got what you're saying Al alejandro um uh but yeah that 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 is a very a very thought-provoking it, it it also suggests some other sort of threads that we can kind of um bring into that discussion but mm -hmm. yeah we'll, we'll kind of let that marinate for a bit and um you will i i, I guarantee you'll see it m appear in some form or fashion because once we have the notion and you share it um we own it and then we make millions off of it no we don't mm -hmm. really <laughs> um, <laughs> troy gets to keep them all though it's really rude it's i do true. yeah it's not it's not a million dollars just a million really great ideas <laughs> you know great idea in one hand and Spit in really, the other. I really want to do the super drag show. I do mm -hmm. too. Honestly, yeah. that's super fun. We yeah. should think of something like that. That could be a fun pride. Mm -hmm. I've got a um, a villain in Icons Rogues who is a uh, a drag queen who can grow to fifty feet tall. Who's called Size Queen. <laughs> <That's what's up. laughs> I like it. Mm -hmm. I'm a fan of it. Sorry, the, the bees. <laughs> <laughs> trying to get me. Yeah. Um, well, listen, friends, uh, we've given you just a couple even extra minutes um, because that's just how we are. We are generous mm -hmm. and also um, I don't pay attention to the time. Right. Um, let me see. What am I doing? I am saying this chat. Um, listen, uh, we really enjoy hanging out with you every Monday. We have such a good time. We, we truly do. Um, I have also noticed, I see you out there in the world sharing what we're doing and talking to folks and saying, why don't you, why aren't you over here hanging out? I appreciate that. Um, uh, definitely do. Also, don't forget right now, take a moment, uh, Look, if you're over at the YouTubes, maybe you're on the Facebook, maybe, you know, Twitter, make sure you're following us on Twitter, but I don't even want to get into that dumpster fire of a place, but head on over to our TikTok, you follow, um, uh, engage, share, um, you tell a friend. And um, also, if you've got a thought, um, we had some people who actually did reach out with some ideas for Mutants and Masterminds program. Um, I'm excited about that. Mm -hmm. And um, I'm not saying all your dreams will come true and we might steal a couple for our own, uh, but it's a partnership and send your ideas to let's play at greenronin.com. And it can be just anything truly. If there's something that you, you, or if there's something that we said that sort of 
sat with you and you want to elaborate, um, or even if you disagree with something, mm-hmm. um, you know, uh, that's fine too. We're, we're, we're fine with that. We can have that discussion. But the one thing that I really want us to <laughs> put the top hat on, Troy. Sure. Okay. I like that. Um, one thing that I really want to remind everybody is, um, we, I, I want us to get more into the, the business of arbitration. <laughs> I want, I want people to bring before us their grievance and for us to, you know, judge it. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, assign a penance of some kind. I mean, some kind of mutants and master courts or something, you know, uh, mm-hmm. just something like that. Uh, also, uh, the weird rashes, perhaps. Um, mm-hmm. uh, you know, maybe you're, you are uh, lucking out in, in love. Um, no. Uh, I, I mean, I know it's hard to believe that they would because the chat is just always so uh, wonderful and lovely. I couldn't imagine. But... Maybe you are. If you, you send us, send us your woes. Don't send any pictures. Do not uh, send a picture. But uh, you know, a, a description is wonderful. Um, send it to let's play at greenronin.com. Um, Steve, do you have anything going on you want to talk about real quick? I think we covered it, especially with the um, the new release this week. Uh, otherwise, um, I am hard at work on our uh, secret project and the uh, uh, upcoming live stream for this month. That's right. How about you, Alex? What's cooking in your world? I got a couple of things going on right now. We're still Ooh. kickstarting my first comic book, Chaotic Good. Um, over on Kickstarter, if you just look up Chaotic Good, it's a fun fantasy role-playing game um, that has some mutants and masterminds accessories I'll be adding to the package, so that's nice. exciting. Um, also, we launched our new Mutants and Masterminds Hero High podcast this week. Uh, called oh, Heroes of Tomorrow. That. Tell us about that. Um, I am playing a teddy bear, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde in that. Uh, but all of us are legacy characters uh, from the Freedomverse. So there are some sidekicks who are showing up. There are. Uh, I am a former soldier of Toy Boy who is trying not to bring Toy Boy back to this point of existence. Mm-hmm. Um, a lot of really good stuff. Um and yeah, we're all teen heroes. We actually we had a fight with the Thieves Guild, which is a bunch of Johnny Rockets mm. uh, villains, and we decided that Johnny Rockets' catchphrase is "It's Rocket Time" when <laughs> an illusionary sure. Johnny Rocket showed up. <laughs> sure, you gotta have that. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, and I'm also in a Batman fan film that came out on April first. <gasps> what? Uh, I'm playing the role of Jim Gordon in the movie Batman called The Riddles. Where the heck do you find that? Nice. Uh, it's over on YouTube. Uh, if you just look up Batman Cold of Riddles, uh, it's by director TJ Montgomery. And uh, I get to hang out with Zatanna and Batman, and I got to defuse a Riddler bomb, and I got to go to a crime scene and look around. It was pretty cool. Right. Okay, so what is it again? It's it's the, the Cult of Riddles? Yes. All right. Evocative. I like that. Okay. Awesome. Um yeah. Wow. I didn't even know that was a thing. That's phenomenal. Of course, you're doing 20,000 amazing things at the same time. Um, yeah, it's a problem. I... <laughs> but at least they're all good things, though, friend. Uh... I mean, you're not doing, you know, uh, pointless, weird stuff. This no. is fun. This is good. This is great. I'm not doing enough drugs to support this to-do list. <laughs> right. mm-hmm. Keep that off your to-do list because that, uh, you know, uh, right. in the long run really causes a lot of problems. Um, so listen, friends, I heard GRC and uh, and I do recognize that you will not recognize my court's authority until we figure out when we're doing this actual play. We're going to do mm-hmm. it. I will put yes. up a question this week. We will get everybody mm-hmm. together and we will have Love is in the Arrow um, Valentine's Day in uh, March. April. <laughs> April. I mean, April. whoops. <laughs> Um, wow. Also, yeah. it's my birthday on Thursday. Um, <gasps> if there is anybody in the Columbus area who wants to come out and celebrate, I'll be at Standard Live on Thursday night. There you go. Well, happy pre-birthday and, to you, my friend. And you all know that Alex does not need Daedalus underwear now. No, he does not. No. But if you happen to be like a home crafter, maybe, uh, you know, maybe uh, make something, uh, just whip something up. Hey, if I have multiple pairs, I will write different days of the week on them. <laughs> you know, and you don't out, you don't have to make underwear out of cloth. It could be you could whittle a pair. You could, um, yeah, gravy a Ohio? pair. Ohio, Nate Robinson. That, oh, yes. that is where Columbus is. Columbus, yeah. Ohio, not Columbus, Georgia. I am absolutely just flabbergasted that you said gravy 
underwear. Is that what you just said to me? That's what I said to you. Those are the words that came out of my mouth. <laughs> well, you know what that means, friends? It means We're it's done. time for us to go. <laughs> um, gentlemen, again, thank you. <laughs> wonderful. A wonderful way to spend our Monday. Friends, don't forget to come hang out with us on thir- <laughs> um, uh, Thursday for Thursday. It's going to be very fun. Um, mm-hmm. Of course, we're going to be talking fantasy age and all that good stuff, which no doubt everybody has picked up their copy. Um, appreciate that. And our new brand name, Gravyware. So everybody, uh, enjoy the rest of your week. Um, be kind and be good. And, um, you know, and be sending us emails with some stuff so we can talk about you on on the stream. Um, okay, friends. Oh, Alex, I'm sorry. I, I'm going to do this one final thing. Um, and that is to share your link to the, to the um, there you go, chat. Take that. Yeah, take that, chat. Take that, chat. Um, and with that, we bid you adieu. Uh, bye-bye. Bye, everybody. Bye, everybody. <laughs>